Give yourselves a hand for clicking on this new episode of It Came From Bandcamp, where I go across the Bandcamp platform finding n not so much what's great, but really what's what's so strange that maybe some people aren't, aren't really talking about it. So let's go! So this first album I'm going to be talking about is from a person by the name of Mert Spalty. This is actually a fan of the show, sent their band camp in, not necessarily to be uh, submitted to this program, but still I, I thought it fit. Uh, Spalty is kind of an electronic music producer who occasionally pulls in some vocal samples from videos and a variety of other things from the internet. It comes out pretty serene, pretty glitchy, pretty intriguing pretty mind-bending during its best moments. So I don't know, let's give it a shot. Let's see what's going on. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm just calculating this song out in my head as, as I'm listening to it. I love how consistently bright and strange a lot of the atmospheres are, but then also how, I guess, kind of disjointed and deconstructed the compositional elements and the rhythms of these tracks are. It's creative, super out there. Very fun to listen to. It's kind of like listening to the auditory equivalent to a really cool digital 3D rendering of a psychedelic image or some kind of colorful shape or something, but then it's being twisted and glitched out as it's rotating or something. I like it. It's cool. This next record that we have over here comes from one Celestophone, also kind of a, a fan and a friend of the show who has been uh, throwing his music my way for a little while now. He is a rapper. And I think you will find Celestophone's delivery and rap style to be wholly unique. Let's say that much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure what to, to liken this to. There's definitely not anything coming up in the rap world in my mind immediately that this reminds me of. I, I actually feel like I'm, I'm listening to the hip-hop equivalent of Daniel Johnston, the, the more that I think about it. I wanted, I wanted to get her dad to hire me as far as I can see. I'm the best piece, like the chest piece, my queen, and I moved diagonally. Anyway, come straight head first, turn right into something somewhat of a dynasty. Coming up with a privately. Okay, man, that's, uh, wow, so much. I mean, the instrumentals are unlike a lot of what I've heard on many rap albums. The, the flows are actually decent outside of, I don't know, the, the bit of tempo issues that he's kind of having here and there, though there's clearly an intended sloppiness to a lot of these recordings. And then there's just that, that damn nasally it sounds like something out of a weird cartoon which i'm i'm not necessarily against in in principle i mean even the cover of this thing looks like a weird ass cartoon yeah after a while of listening to it i kind of decided that maybe i feel like it's a little too weird for me, personally, but it's also too weird not to mention and not to share and not to push out there to see, you know, where could this go? Maybe a lot of people will enjoy this a, a lot more than me because this, this is, this is strange. This is strange, but intriguing. And clearly there's some cool technical aspects to it as well. And it's, it's legit experimental and, and sort of adventurous too. So uh, definitely unique personality in, in the underground hip-hop realm, to say the least. Okay, this next record that I'm going to be talking about here on the Bandcamp platform is from one Jeff Witscher. 
which sure. It's called approximately 1,000 beers. Apparently this is kind of a, a weird experimental music project with deconstructed country. The entire album is uh, pretty brief and features a lot of glitchy, strange, robotic, stretched out country music. <laughs> How does this accidentally sound like something that would be in a David Lynch movie or like in an episode of Twin Peaks? He strolled into town on a nice sunny day. Little did we know that our look had flown away. There are times in life when you feel so free. And there are times in life when it's not meant to be. God damn it, you lied to me. This, this, is, this, is a fucking, this is a fucking David Lynch album, and it's secret, and it's been thrown onto the internet, and and I I found it. Yeah, this, this is actually weirdly compelling, believe it or not, to me. I, I find this... Uh, attractively freakish. It's kind of mind-bending, but it's also really hilarious in a, in a very smart and, uh, and self-aware way. And I like that. I like that, goddammit. This next album off the Bandcamp platform also involves a bit of satire, but much less in the way of explanation. Uh, it's from a band by the name of Neckbeard Death Camp. The title of this record is White Nationalism is for Basement Dwelling Losers. If you uh, didn't hear it, let me say the, the title of that one more time. White, White Nationalism, Nationalism is, is for Basement Dwelling, dwelling losers. losers. Yeah, that's pretty much the name of this thing. And it's and it's pretty much like a grind, corey, crust, punky, black metal-ish noisy extreme rock project uh, whose lyrics and themes just pretty much make fun of alt writers and and all that shit so let's give it a shot the first selection i will play off of this album is called incel warfare <laughs> Not that they need to be read to you, because you could clearly hear them right there, but the lyrics of the song are as follows. This nation has a problem with greasy boys in cargo shorts who feel owed a woman under threat of murder. You are a stick without a carrot, a triple hook without a worm. I'm sick and tired of turning on the news to see another coward caught alive in custody. Incel warfare, not even human. Okay. The little album slash EP here also features such hits as The Left Are The Real Fascists and Zyklon B, as in slash B slash random board on 4chan. Also, the fetishization of Asian women despite a demand for a pure white race outro. It's a fun little project, you know, fun, fun, fun anti-Nazi grindy, black metal -y stuff for the, for the whole family. Next on the list here, I want to shout out the Yona album C. Uh, Yona is actually an AI pop artist slash singer developed by a super producer and creative mind, Mr. Ash Kusha, who I have covered on the channel a few times before. So what you're hearing here is, is the result of uh, the input of, of an AI. So this is like AI music, AI singing. Um, so if, if, if the reality, which some people tell me is coming, that we're just going to be listening to a bunch of computer-generated music in the future and all the pop stars uh, uh, years from now will, will just be uh, holograms, maybe this is the first step toward that. That This, this, in, this in Vocaloid, I guess, but, you know, I, I think this is maybe a... A uh, more interesting step in that direction. You are on my mind. You are every bit. It's electric still. But I can't go on. But I can't feel right. I'll be sending waves. 
and I'll be sending love. I'll be sending waves. I think that's pretty cool. I think there's a lot of potential in that. Maybe if the vocal melody were maybe a bit more logical and fit over the chords a bit better and felt less like the voice was just talking, I think uh, this could be a lot sweeter and a lot more, um, I guess, uh, uh, appealing. I'd like to use words like cheers. I like to use words like rap. I like to use words about law. I like to use words about law. I, I feel like Yona just like out poppy poppy on on this recording over here, strangely enough. Yona, check this band camp out. It's, pre it's pretty unique. Shout out to Ash Kusha. You the best. Okay, this next one Austin brought to the table. Not as familiar with this project. It comes from one Mike Shiflet. Tetracosa, Volume 8. So, Volume 8 of what, uh, you ask? Uh, apparently, Tetracosa is a 24-hour piece being released over the course of 2018 in eight three-hour installments. It involves 350 unique sound objects categorized and layered such that no two movements of this album sound alike. Some objects are constrained to a single hour or volume and others spanning the 24 hour duration. So uh, a pretty unique concept project over here. Again, we're on volume eight, 12 tracks on this thing, uh, some spanning 21 minutes, some 16, some 12, 15. Uh, let's just give Track seven, a shot, shot in the dark here. Let's go, let's see what's up. And, th and they're all titled after the runtime. So this is hour 22, 31 minutes, 33 seconds, and 36 milliseconds. And we have hit a pretty nice serene ambient drone here with what sounds like bees buzzing. And a wicka 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 electronic effect. You know, if you are going to make a drone. I, I do like a good textured drone. That feels nice and dense. You can kind of swim in it, and you're catching a lot of vibes, a lot of sounds, a lot of layers. And Mike has certainly provided that here very quickly, already by the one minute mark of this track. Jumping to another track, let's just go track nine, see what's up with that one. Well, that's frightening. All right, it's, it's very frightening. All right, let's uh, let's move on to another band camp over here. Galen Tipton, Night Bath is the name of this record. Features a cute little freaky weird crab thing on the front cover. Let's give the uh, song Whisper a shot, shall we? <laughs> The, the, I don't think this is the case, but the, the speed at which whatever sounds I'm hearing have been brought up to, uh, it, it sounds like the melody is all around the mulberry bush or something, but uh, just, just a guess. This is really cool. This is strange. This sounds like what would happen if you had a member of the PC music crew guide the music production decisions of someone from an insane asylum and uh, had them had them try to to produce a jock jam. This Wait 
I love these super speedy, bright, insane, colorful trends that are coming out of electronic music and just beat production right now. I just find them so refreshing and uh, just a nice change of pace from not only the dark and atmospheric, but also the very self-serious music that I hear coming out of EDM and uh, in a lot of beat music these days. Uh, again, it's 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 a kind of a breath of fresh air. This this is this is quite good. I, Austin just threw this in here. I didn't even know this this was so good. I didn't even know this was going to be so good. Damn, this is this is so sweet. And one more thing, we are going to have to add to this insane episode of It Came from Bandcamp. Uh, goes by the name of Melodic Plays. Kids See Ghosts, uh, under the name Melodic on Bandcamp, and it just seems that this person applies the melodica to a lot of different covers and um, interpretations of various artists and, and albums out there. So uh, I, I think we're pretty much in for what the, the title says. Let's give it a shot. Down the chimney he will come Oh, yeah, so good it should cost. Bought an alligator, I ain't talking the cost. Let me say, ooh, huh. Like a mix of Master P and Rick Ross. Nuh uh, she seemed to make me always feel like a boss. Uh uh, she said I'm in the wrong hole, said I'm lost. Uh uh. Okay, cl clearly we're not just working with melodica here, uh, because if, if this were merely just one person who, let's say, were a melodica virtuoso, and, and I'm sure they're out there, uh, trying to honestly recreate the music of Kid Sea Ghosts. Maybe it could be kind of cool. Uh, but clearly this individual is using uh, their amateurish charm to put across uh, the, the laziest and most cobbled together uh, take possible. Okay, let's give a shot to uh, one of my favorite tracks on here. Maybe one of the most emotionally potent moments on the album, uh, Reborn. Let's let's give that a shot. Let's see uh, what Melodic does with, uh, with that amazing track. I'm so, I'm so reborn. I'm moving forward. Keep moving forward. Not not nearly as bad as I anticipated it it was going to be. Definitely could have been worse. And that has been uh, the latest installment of It Came From Bandcamp, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, over here next to my head, Transition is another episode of the It Came From Bandcamp series. If you want to check it out and uh, kind of go back into the series, get recommended more strange Bandcamp pages. Also, you can hit the link to subscribe to the channel next to my head on the screen, too. Uh, also, remember to hit the bell as well to get a reminder for when we come out with a new video. And, uh, yeah. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Anthony Fantano, it came from Bandcamp. Hot Dad did the theme song forever.